AMD's copying Intel, Android wants to see you crash, and the 4060 Ti is allegedly kind of sad. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Oz host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your OzFest on this Friday, May 19th, 2023. So that's the last time you're going to see Ozzy here on Hot News. Bye, guys. Despite uh, unpopular opinions, he, yeah. he can actually leave. Yeah. And he's gonna. So we're going to start off today talking about how Intel gave a little exclusive interview to Tom's Hardware talking about the future of their CPUs. The CTO, Mark Papermaster, deep diving on some of the things that they're going to be changing. And it turns out they're just going to be copying the roadmap of everything that everybody else is already doing. So specifically when it comes to hybrid cores, and that is having one big powerful core and one little efficient core like Intel and Apple are already doing, they say. But what you'll also see is more variations of the cores themselves. You'll see high performance cores mixed with power efficient cores mixed with acceleration. So where we're moving to now is not just variations in core density, but variations in the type of core and how you configure the cores. But based on how AMD's done with the X3D chips and trying to work with Windows to get that all configured, I'm not necessarily sure they're gonna implement it as well as Intel's thread director, but it remains to be seen how that's gonna go. But specifically saying that it will absolutely be coming to client or consumer PCs sometime soon with him saying it's already there today and you'll see more coming. So you can expect to see a hybrid architecture coming out from AMD in the near future, very similar to what Intel has, but additionally saying that they're also going to be using AI to help develop the chips, which is something that NVIDIA has already open admittedly been doing, saying that we're going to solve all of those constraints and you'll see more and more generative AI using the very chip design process. It's being used in point applications today, but as an industry over the next couple of years, next really one to two years, I think that we'll have the proper constraints to protect IP and you're going to start seeing production applications of generative AI to speed the design process. It won't replace designers, but I think it will have a tremendous capability to speed design. So it looks like AMD has got some good stuff in the future. They are changing things up. AMD was one of the first companies to implement chiplets when it came to their CPUs and their GPUs. Intel and Nvidia are still lagging behind when it comes to that. We are expecting Intel to launch Meteor Lake later this year, which is going to follow that chiplet architecture that AMD has. But Nvidia is still seemingly, at least for the RTX 50 series, going to be going with a monolithic die, which is creating one big fat boy as opposed to breaking it up into the little different pieces that are supposed to work together. Just like Ozzy's gonna be copying hot news, isn't that right? That's yes. what you're gonna do, yeah. He's, you guys, we heard you on the, the last episode in the comments. You said you wanted more Oz, Oz news. Well, there's more coming. Oh! <laughs> There's, that's all I can say. Oh, really, that is all I can say because there's, there's we haven't stuff, developed yeah, a plan. I don't even know what he's talking about, but I do know that I'm talking about today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Morgan and Morgan. Now, thankfully, I've never been in a car accident, but I know friends and family members who have. And I have this clear memory as a child of being in a courtroom with my dad when he was hit by a distracted driver. And the thought of having to go through all of that seems overwhelming, but not with Morgan and Morgan. They've modernized the injury law process so you can submit a claim and have it reviewed by a lawyer without ever having to leave the couch. You can sign documents, upload pictures, share medical records, and doctor bills all from your phone. You can even text your attorney and case manager without ever having to go to an office. If you're injured and don't know where to start with Morgan & Morgan, it's so easy. More than 3 million people have trusted Morgan & Morgan when they were injured in an accident. And if you're ever in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. You can submit a claim in eight clicks or less, and you have America's largest injury law firm fighting for you. You can get started at forthepeople.com forward slash UFD or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell phone. Big thanks again to Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring today's video. And what's also for the people is Sony's Project Leonardo, which is supposed to be their accessibility controller that they're going to be launching. Microsoft has kind of had the reins when it comes to adaptive controllers, and Project Leonardo was announced by Sony at CES to bring adaptive controllers to the masses, and it looks like they're finally ready to launch it, with them specifically calling this the PlayStation 5 Access Controller. It works very similar to how Microsoft has already set it up with three and a half million millimeter jacks to actually connect all the various devices together. It's not available for sale at the current moment, but you can register for updates over on the Sony website in case you want to check that out. And what's also good for a lot of the people is Logitech is partnering with iFixit to bring repairability to their devices. Can I get a woo? Woo! woo. Not you, Kyler! Only Ozzy! Kyler oh. steals my phone. 
Commander. Gosh, Kyler! In order to help the fight in e-waste and making sure that devices are repairable, Logitech Repair is now officially on iFixit website. It's only going to be specifically applying to their MX Master line of mices currently, but they will have different devices rolling out as time moves forward. So the Repair Hub will cover the MX Master and the MX Anywhere mouse models with parts being available as standalone or iFixit kits that will be available sometime this summer. But it's a good move forward for the industry for repairability. We celebrate this, don't we, Yazzie? You can come like sit next to me. I don't want to like mess up your frames. <laughs> no, it's fine. This is this is all chaos anyways. No, okay. I'll, I'll sit out. <laughs> <laughs> but what is bad for the industry is Sega deciding, hey, did Tears of the Kingdom just make $700 million in three days? We, we want some of that money too. So they're announcing that they're gonna be contemplating at least raising the prices on their AAA games going up to $70 as opposed to the $60 that we've been seeing. It's a move that's been happening in the industry in the gaming industry for the past few years, especially as the next gen consoles have come out. I don't like seeing this, but it makes sense. Why take less money when you can make more money? Simple maths, dude. It's capitalism. Simple maths. Well, it's also simple maths is the UFD deals. Yo, welcome back to UFD deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Friday, guys. Hope you guys are gonna have a great weekend, just like we got some great deals for you. Starting with this two terabyte Gen 3 M.2 SSD from Team Group, going for only $79.99, making it $30 off and the lowest price in 30 days. It's only Gen 3 speeds, but like two terabytes. But then next up, we have the Thermaltake Pure Plus 12 RGB fan pack, coming in with three fans for only $39.99, making it 43% off and the lowest price in 30 days. And then last but not least, we have this portable monitor from Rehisk. This 15.6 inch 1080p display with Type-C power delivery is going for only $93.99, making it $126 or 57% off and the lowest price in 30 days. I'm a big fan of portable monitors. I never liked them until I actually used one. So this price, uh, you might want to just give it a try. And that's it. Those are the deals. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news and I'm going to go get my Uber Eats because he's here. And right now you might be saying to yourself, hey Brett, wasn't that just essentially an unskippable ad for your affiliate programs? To which I have to say yes, but get ready for even more because YouTube is bringing more unskippable ads, at least to their TV app, not to YouTube TV, but rather the TV app for YouTube that's on your smart TV. It's a little confusing, but they're getting rid of the two 15 second commercials that you can typically see while watching a YouTube video and instead opting for one single unskippable 30 second ad, making it more like television. Also more like television is when you pause the video, it will shrink your video down and then bring you banner ads on the side to just make sure you're giving them more money. You add this on top of the fact that YouTube's potentially going to be blocking ad blockers. And it's very clear that YouTube just, they want, they wants more money. Kyler, can I get an, I need more money. Uh, um, uh. Oh, so when I'm talking to you directly, you can't do what I need. And Google needs to see you crash, or at least that's why the feature would exist because they're rolling out into Android, a version of a dash cam, which should run on your phone using essentially your phone's cameras in order to make sure that you're being protected on the road so that when you get into an accident, like Ozzy and I did yeah, it was while I was, I was driving him home from the airport and we got rear-ended. I don't have a, I don't have an Android phone, so that's yeah, probably where it goes. If only we had an Android phone, then we wouldn't be in the whole millions of dollars now. That's exactly what, my car was worth millions, of, or yeah. there was. Yeah. 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 So in the personal safety app that Google has rolled out into Android, you're gonna have the ability to record with a dash cam where it will set up some background recording. And one of the things that I was thinking was, this needs to be automatically enabled when you run Android Auto and they have that fixed by making sure that it starts the dash cam when you connect to a specific Bluetooth device, probably the Bluetooth that's in your vehicle and it will automatically start recording your dash cam and it will automatically delete videos that are over three days old so that you're not constantly piling up storage on your phone. So it's a good solution. It's not officially available. It got leaked as part of like a beta build that they weren't supposed to publish, but nine to five Google got access to it anyways. But I, I like this. I wanna see this come out to more devices because you just set up your phone while you're driving. Don't, I mean, for GPS and other reasons or just to have it there and then it records for you. Or it could just record you doing like lip sync dubs and stuff. Which you do all the time. I, I actually do. Wait, really? Yeah. <laughs> I sing a lot. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Isn't that right, Kyler? He sings a lot. <laughs> See, I can't tell. 
your sarcasm tone and your like legit tone are the same. But what I don't think is a good idea is the new RTX 40 series cards that Nvidia decided to announce yesterday, which are gonna be going on sale May 24th, at least the 4060 Ti is officially according to what Nvidia has said. It's now publicly out there. We already got all these details from video cards, but the 4060 Ti is gonna start at 399, representing no price increase coming out May 24th. The 16 gigabyte model is gonna cost 499, coming out sometime in July for some reason. And then the 4060 is gonna cost 299, also coming out sometime in July. Not a whole lot of details Nvidia presenting here, but they did give a nice presentation between the 4060 Ti and the 3060 Ti, as well as the 4060 between the 3060. And what you'll find is that they're choosing to change how they're communicating information. You'll notice there's a new memory subsystem section that they're presenting so that you know that it has more L2 cache and then it has more effective memory bandwidth because of all of the complaining that's been done on the internet about how Nvidia is just not giving as much memory bandwidth with their graphics cards. But we'll get into that in a second. They also presented a lot of comparative benchmarks between these GPUs and the previous generations, but also in all of the marketing shenanigans that they've been doing lately, showing it with DLSS 3.0 on with frame generation, which probably represents the vast majority of gains that you're seeing here with frame generation. As you you can see here in a game like Microsoft Flight Simulator, you're at like double the FPS on this RTX 4060 versus a 3060. But then when you drop down to something like Resident Evil Remake or The Last of Us Part One, the gains are a little bit smaller. And the same situation is applying on the 4060 Ti, except for it looks like the gains without DLSS 3.0 are even narrower than they were with the 4060. So it's just a very weird situation and Nvidia is spending a lot of time trying to educate you and school you on the reason why the 40 series isn't as bad as you think it is with them trying to make sure you know how the memory subsystem works with the L1 cache going to L2 cache, going to the VRAM and the system memory and the differences between the ADA memory subsystem and the prior generation so that you know that it's all good. But if you watch Steve from Gamers Nexus talk about how they put Nvidia's feet to the fire about this, one of the things that they communicated was what happens when you run out of L2 cache? Wouldn't it then be slower? And Nvidia was like, yeah, for the, for the few games that that'll happen in. So we'll have to wait and see in like real world benchmarks, not marketing presentations that Nvidia publishes to see whether or not this is legitimate. But these do mark the first GPUs that aren't getting a price increase. And even the 4060 is getting a technical price decrease going from 329 on the 3060 down to 299 on the 4060. But that might be because the memory subsystem and the GPU horsepower on it are actually not as good as Nvidia is trying to promote because we do have our first leaked third party benchmark showing up in Geekbench and it shows that the 4060 Ti is simply 9% faster, which is not very good generation on generation as the smallest lead that we've seen on a new generation card from the 30 series. Every single other GPU that Nvidia has launched has had better leads than that. And it just, it seems to look like Nvidia cut down these cards way more than they reasonably should have. The memory bandwidth is way slower, even if the effective memory bandwidth is higher when you're using the L2 cache. But then you also have the issue of the fact that they reduced the PCI Express lanes. And I just, I'm anti 4060 and 4060 Ti. So I think the reason Nvidia is really trying to hammer home this memory subsystem thing is because they know that people are gonna run into it. The cards are not gonna perform as well as even the 4070 did compared to the 3070. These are kind of lame cards in their generation and no wonder they didn't raise the price. But I think that's probably because of the public pressure. They would have, they would have if nobody complained. They absolutely would have, but you can't beat the price of free. And according to Nvidia, they're gonna have the summer of RTX where they have hundreds of 40 series cards to give away. So get ready for that to happen, except for 
Ozzy, would you mind grabbing me that PC? We're actually gonna be giving away this PC at 3 p.m. today over on our Twitch channel. This is the Noctua Fractal North build. It has a 13600K with an Asus Noctua RTX 3070. If you wanna show up, you don't have to wait for this 40 series giveaway. We got a whole PC that we're giving away. And then after that, Ozzy, would you mind grabbing me one more PC? We're giving away this one after that. The giveaways are happening not at the same day, but the next PC will be this 13900K RTX 4090 Corsair PC. It's it's amazing. So if you want to come watch us over on our Twitch channel, you can do that. Ozzy won't be there, but our free PCs will. And I'll be back here on Monday for more of the hottest tech news. Again, Ozzy will not. Yes, I won't. But you have the 4090 to keep you company. And I would choose a 4090 over me. I wouldn't. You're, no, your company is worth more. <laughs>